you know, you're not, you, this is not like the work life balance idea <laughs> doesn't even apply. Work life balance. It's ridiculous. It's, well, yeah. it's a ridiculous concept. Like the idea that there's like work life balance in a startup is ridiculous. If you're looking for work life balance, do not go to a startup or yeah. any kind of ambitious company. There is a series of places you can work in the world yes. where you do not need to do anything more than what's put in front of you. And you just put the round peg in the round hole and the square peg in the square hole, Paul, and you go home. And you get your, like, you know, you, you get your little, you know, bits uh, and grains of rice and you, you go heat them up and eat them. That's it. And then there's this other thing, which is the extreme pursuit of changing the world and sacrificing. And we have a generation of people, or multi generations of people, who are soft. They're just soft. I mean, what is the big struggle we've had to deal with in America in our lifetimes? Like 9 11, and we, we didn't have the Vietnam War, and then we had this like weird Iraq wars and Middle East wars that were kind of like a small number of people went and we sent drones. Like, we have not had to sacrifice. Gen Xers, you know, maybe the tail end of boomers experienced the Vietnam War, regrettably. But, you know, we've had a couple of generations now, three, I guess, that just haven't had to suffer. Yeah. And so we're soft as Americans. We're soft. And then you look at people in China and we're like, oh my God, these poor Chinese people are living in these tiny cramped apartments. Like they were living in like essentially lean-tos in Northern China with no running water or like one spigot of ice cold water for the entire village. Like they're thrilled to be joining the middle class, even if it's <laughs> yeah. the bottom of the middle class, right? Uh, they, they've taken hundreds of millions of people in China and moved them into the middle class. And we're like, oh my God, these people are suffering. It's like, you know, they're up to $4 an hour, three or $4 an hour in the factories there. And they were just two decades ago at, you know, I don't know, uh, it was probably 50 cents an hour, something crazy like that. And now they've improved the quality of life there so much, just like America did 200 years ago or 100 years ago. They've improved it so much in China that now they're getting outpriced for factories from Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, India, and people are moving, and people in China are moving the factories out of China into other countries. <laughs> yeah. Because the Chinese are now outsourcing to Vietnam and other countries. So this is the way of the world. You know, people move up and they get a better lot in life for their families. And just in America, we've gotten soft. And there's a generation, and we, how do people die in America now? Suicide, obesity, heart attacks, anxiety. I mean, we're suffering from things that if you told people a hundred years ago that the number, the top ways Americans would die would be overeating and suicide, they'd be like, what? You're literally killing yourself or eating yourself to death? That's what's happening in America? Yeah. And and when everybody, not everybody, uh, en masse, there's a large number of people who have become softer and softer, uh, capitalism creates an environment where there is people that still step up amidst that with a big yes. dream and challenge the, the conventions and yeah. Yeah, that human spirit just arise above that. As Elon is an example of that, uh, Jeff Bezos is an example of countless, that. Countless, countless examples. Uh, and, and they push you know, the limits of those uh, of human beings that are willing to step up. And, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I think about sort of how to create a company that, uh, that amidst all of the softness yeah. still creates a revolution. It's not, it doesn't seem trivial. Mm -hmm. It seems like how do you build a culture that's once healthy, but also unhealthy in the way it's all, that it's all an top Olympic down. pursuit is. It's all top down. It, the, everybody just, I mean, you asked earlier what leadership was and I never answered the question. I think, you know, what leaders do is they set the example, they set the bar. And if you look at someone like Elon, you know, we're, we're personal friends for 20 years um, and he is indefatigable. Like, I mean, the guy has a stamina that is just phenomenal. Like he does not get tired. He works relentlessly and he sets that standard for the rest of the team. <clears throat> and I, and I, I think, you know, Bezos is very sharp and likes to debate stuff and is very, you know, and Jobs was just incredible at design and figuring out how to bridge that gap. So they just, leaders set the standard. Mm -hmm. They set the standard. And you know that your time is over as a leader when you can't set the standard. And that's when you have to pass the baton, yeah. right? And Bezos did that. Brilliant. And Bezos now is saying, you know what? I'm 57. I'm the richest guy on the planet, uh, depending on the week. <laughs> and uh, I would like to do some other challenges. But I don't want to grind it out at Amazon for another 25 years. I want to do other things. And so he passed the baton. And, and that's the healthy thing to do in that regard. I do think there is a time period in which you can run that hot. Uh, 
And then at a certain point, you have to then change, just like an athlete might go to be a coach, right? And you, or a commentator. And so, you know, being an entrepreneur is brutal. It's, you know, seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Anybody who says anything differently is kidding themselves. You're going to have to sacrifice if you, and this competition. And America has to fight. If America does not win capitalism, and China does, it is literally the end of the human species. It's, it's over for humanity. Right now, everything has been going really well in terms of the number of people living in poverty is plummeting. A life, uh, you know, lifespans have been rising. Science is booming. The economy is booming. All these things are incredible. The one thing that's kind of stagnant right now is the number of people living in democracy versus under authoritarian rule. It's flat. So when you look at all Steve Pinker's charts and he's really excited, yeah, there's one you're going to see that's flat. And I think we peaked with 53 or 54 percent of people on the planet Earth being in a democracy, and now it's going below 50. And it's because some of the democratic, you know, Western countries don't have the population growth of some of the communist and socialist countries uh, and authoritarian countries. And we have to make sure that we're we win capitalism. We must win economically. That is the battlefield. Yeah. The battlefield is science, technology, and money and economy, finance. That's the battlefield. China wins, authoritarians win. And at any time, Xi Jinping can pull Jack Ma into a room and say, it's time for you to be re-educated. Or they can put three or four million people, Uyghurs, into prison camps and say, you know what? This religious thing, that's counter to what is productive for us. Therefore, we're gonna shave your heads and we're going to have you literally pick cotton in the fields. They have Uyghurs with no sense of any kind of arc of history in the fields picking cottons as slaves in what can only be described by every humanitarian organization as a concentration camp. And every Jewish person I know takes great offense when somebody uses the Holocaust as a metaphor, except in the case of the Uyghurs right now. And every Jewish person I've talked to has said to me, that is a Holocaust. That is millions of people going to genocide because of their religious beliefs. And I'm an atheist, but if people want to believe a certain religion, fine. But you know, China's approach is we need to win capitalism so bad, we need to win on the global stage so bad, we can't have any of this religious stuff going on here. That is a distraction from winning and beating America. And then in America, the people who are gonna make us win are the entrepreneurs yeah. and the scientists and the technology and our education system and finance. And we're vilifying those things. It's, uh, it's pretty dark. It's dark, but I, I still believe that the uh, the vilification is just in the space of Twitter and the space of ideas. I think that's probably a good And point. entrepreneurs win out in the end. They they don't listen I to believe we'll that. I believe we'll win. Yeah. And they'll build, we'll get the rocks. Some of up. them do actually in their darkest moments, I can tell you that they turn off their Twitter accounts and they, I've had to sit down with a number of entrepreneurs and say, turn off Twitter. This is not healthy for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a healthy pursuit because w don't read the comments. If you do, it's like a full contact sport. You should just take it as like professional wrestling or something, <laughs> but stay focused on building companies uh, and, you know, advancing the human species through science and technology. I mean-